also want to look at the energy use by sector. So this is again a 2019 data from a set of countries, uh, including mostly developed countries here. So uh, these kinds of data is not always available everywhere. There is Indian data, of course, but we have to look into a little bit more in details in tables. So here, what is being seen is you are getting this energy, okay, by whatever means. Which sectors are using that energy? So if you're getting, say, 100 joules, how is that 100 joules getting distributed among the various sectors? Okay. So here is your transport sector. Okay, this purple region, uh, the dark blue region. So energy that is being used by cars, buses, trucks, aircraft, etc. This section here is the industrial and commercial sector. Okay, this section here. All right. And this section is the residential sector, households. So industry and commerce on this side, transport on this side, households on this side. Okay. Now in the transport sector, you have commercial vehicles and passenger vehicles. So passenger vehicles, so total contribution of uh, use of transport sector is 35% of the total energy being produced. So transport is consuming 35% of the energy, approximately. This may change in different parts of the world. Passenger cars take out around 21% and the commercial vehicles take out the rest, which would be like 16%, correct? Uh, or 14%. Okay. Then the industry sector can be separated, industry and commerce can be separated into multiple sectors. One is manufacturing industry, manufacturing of steel, cement, plastics, all the goods that are being used, uh, the manufacturing sector that, that is producing the goods. Both the major goods, kind of the steel, raw materials, as, as well as laptops and all electronics industry. So that is the manufacturing industry. Out of this basic metals like iron smelting, aluminium smelting, making of alloys, this is 6%, the rest is 23 minus 6, so around 17%. So manufacturing sector is consuming 23% of the energy. Okay. Then you have other industries which include the mining sector, the mining of, uh, uh, of iron ore, the mining of copper ore, etc. The mining of gold, so that is using some amount of energy. And then there are other miscellaneous industries, so that is 8%. Okay. Then you have the commercial sector, the service industry, like your um, uh, goods storage, supermarkets, office spaces, right? So those are the service industries, the data centers, okay? All the service driven industrial sectors, restaurants, correct? Movie theaters. So all of that together is around 14%. Okay. So this is kind of the industrial and commercial zone. Then you have the residential, so our households. That uses around 20% of the electricity of which residential space heating, so this is heating and cooling, air conditioners and heating systems. That takes 11% and the rest uh, residential electricity for your TVs, for your lights, etc. Take out the rest. So uh, this is important to note for as a household economy, if you see AC bill is much higher when ACs are turning on when, rather than when it's turning off. So residential space heating is a significant chunk of the residential energy consumption. So that is how the energy use is, is separated out and uh, this kind of is important in later sections when we are looking at how in each sector we can introduce sustainable energy technology because these sectors have different needs. Okay, So that is an important aspect here. Now that was the global picture. We will end it today's class by looking at the Indian scenario a little bit more. Okay. What is the Indian context here? So here, uh, again, this is again an important policy paper from International Energy Agency, IEA India Energy Outlook 2021, freely available, you can check it, uh, it will give you a lot of interesting data. So this is the total primary energy demand in India in millions of tons of oil equivalent. Remember the ton of oil equivalent unit we looked at, right? So here. The value is given is MTOE, million tons of oil equivalent or megaton of oil equivalent. 10 to the power 6 tons of oil equivalent is the energy unit being used here. And these are the dots. Okay, so the total energy uh, use 
is given by these dots from 2000 to 2020. So this is 2000 to 2010, 2010 to 2019, 2020 there is a drop because of the COVID pandemic. So there is a reason why I am not showing more recent data compared to 2019 because the COVID pandemic has created a temporary decrease which is uh, uh, not according to the normal trends, right? So, uh, so if you see the energy consumption, it has increased, then there is a drop in 2019, 2020 area after to, in 2020, 2021. And there will be another increase in this year when there is a large uh, demand. So, uh, so the lockdowns and the uh, industrial shutdowns due to the uh, COVID pandemic has changed the trend somewhat and is giving you somewhat misleading figures if you are looking at kind of a decadal trends, correct? So we need to be aware of the, those aspects. So if you look at, this has kind of increased in a monotonic fashion over the years from around uh, 400 million tons of oil equivalent to around 900 million tons of oil equivalent in 2019. It would have hit around 1000 or something by uh, 2020, like something like this, around 950 or something, but it has decreased due to the COVID pandemic in India. Okay. So that was the energy demand growing very rapidly in India. And where does this energy come from? Okay. So here, um, the brown is coal. Okay. And this is 100%. So uh, around 35, 30 to 35% came from coal in 2000. The fraction actually increased in 2010 to 40% and increased further to around 40 45% uh, by 2019. So if you see the trend, not only is the total energy production increasing or energy demand increasing, the fraction of the energy that is coming from coal is actually increasing in India in the last 19 years. All right. Oil is the next major uh, uh, region. So this is kind of say if you say this is 30% to 60%. So around 30% of the total energy being uh, energy demand was being catered to by oil. Similar case in uh, 2010 and similar case in 2019. Okay, so this has increased. So this has also increased. So now this is around uh, from say 45% to 6, 70%. So uh, 25 to 30%. Correct. So that is the amount of energy that is coming from petroleum. Okay. Natural gas fraction in India is quite low. It has increased somewhat uh, from say around 5% to around 8-7-8%. Uh, but natural gas remains a minor player in the Indian markets today. Then traditional biomass. So villagers using traditional firewood, charcoal, etc. for their heating and cooking needs was a huge chunk in 2000. So around um, more than 25 to 30%. Right. And this chunk has actually decreased. Okay. And this decrease has been fueled primarily by shift from uh, traditional wood-based chulas to modern gas stoves, etc. So this has been replaced by petroleum-based cooking systems, LPG systems. So you, you know the policy of uh, putting gas cylinders in every uh, village households. So that aspect you are seeing here. Okay, That the traditional biomass of using firewood has moved from to LPG based systems. The other is hydro nuclear renewables. Okay. That has not changed significantly as a fraction. As you can see here, it's around 10% before it's 10% now. Okay. So here also at least till 2019, no clear trend in a shift from to sustainable systems have happened. Okay. In fact, it's the opposite. See traditional biomass, uh, is still a renewable resource. So if you are decreasing the fraction of traditional biomass, you are decreasing the fraction of renewables in the energy mix. So there are many disadvantages of traditional biomass. We will see that. But what has happened between 2000 and 2019 is the fraction of energy coming from non-renewable sources in India has shifted from 65% to around 75%. 10% increase in non-renewables. Okay. So that has been the macro trend in the last 19 years for India. So uh, this is compounded by one other issue that India is not self-sufficient in fossil fuel resources. So this is the production of individual fossil fuel resources in green. 
this is the import requirements and this is kind of the import dependence what percentage of the total in, uh, uh, amount produced is coming amount used is coming from imports so if you see in coal in 2000 most of the coal was domestically sourced okay so the import dependence was less than 5% 2010 no longer this is the case import dependence has grown to 25% so 25% of the coal being used is coming from abroad this trend has increased in 2019 and the import dependence has grown to around 30% 30, 30 okay so by 2019 30% of the coal being used to generate electricity is being coming from abroad for oil the situation is worse even in 2000 the import dependence was around 60% so 60% of your oil needed for your cars buses etc is coming from abroad and by 2019 this has gone up to 75% Okay, because our oil production values have not increased while our oil consumption has increased significantly. Natural gas, similar case. In 2000, almost all our natural gas was domestically sourced. By 2019, 50% of the natural gas used is coming from abroad. Okay. So we are extremely vulnerable to domestic international market shocks in oil and in gas as well as partly in coal by 2019 and this issue is going to go on if our energy demands increase as they will as we will see in the next time of course next we will also look at annual power sector capacity additions this is kind of an interesting bit so in each year there is in, uh, new power plants are being generated and they can generate power at a certain power uh, capacity capacity power. we will discuss what capacity power is basically how much power it can produce over a yearly basis okay so here uh, so these are all new power plants coming in from year to year basis how many total in power production capacity has increased what is the uh, individual contributions so uh, the orange is solar photovoltaics the brown is coal the blue is wind the dark blue is hydroelectric okay and the light blue is gas and this line is the percentage share of wind and solar in total capacity addition for that year okay now you can see a good trend here that uh, up to say 2014 the percentage share of solar wind in total capacity increase was around 10 uh, percent uh, because of this capacity additions, the percentage share has increased to 20% of the total capacity. Okay, so there is a, has been a monotonic increase in more and more renewable power systems being introduced every year. Okay. And that has increased the percentage share of renewables in the electricity production. So remember, solar and wind is giving you electricity. Okay. Whereas the total energy produced is electricity plus thermal plus transportation. So that that needs to be remain rem uh, you need to remember but you can see that till around 2015 2014 most of the new power plant capacity addition was from coal solar and wind was becoming important by 2014 onwards uh, and they continue to become more and more important as the uh, years have gone on so nowadays in the next few years most of the new energy electricity production capacity additions will be solar and wind only okay so that is a good trend so this is where we will stop today uh, uh, we have discussed uh, the uh, types of energy in this week the units of energy the uh, uh, importance of energy in society and some of the major macro trends uh, so this week uh, we will uh, we will put a tutorial after this to give you a, some uh, ideas of how to use different types of energy and how to use these graphs to get interesting data out of it uh, and in the next week we will start discussing our next section which is the impact of fossil fuels we are saying fossil fuels is bad we have to move to more sustainable energy sources why it is bad what are the damages this is causing to the world okay so that will be the next section so thank you for listening 
uh, and see you next week once more.